Hello everybody. In this box is what Apple claims is the most powerful music computer the world has ever seen. That's quite a big claim. And I'm going to find out if it lives up to those very high expectations. heavy. Oh, it's super heavy. I wasn't expecting that. There it is. It's got 128 gigabytes of RAM. It's got the maxed out ultra processor, dual processors, the whole thing. The only thing I've skimped on is the internal solid state drive, which I'm going to use there's a two terabyte one in here and we're going to use a load of external ones. But look, I'm going to set this up and then we can start getting into the real nitty gritty of how good it is at making music. And lo, my Apple Studio is installed and up and running, and here I have it with uh, Cubase, and it's all uh, going great. Um, what I'm going to do now is I will explain a quick overview of the advantages of it. Uh, I'll talk about the difference between running Silicon Native and um, Rosetta. Um, and then I'll get into the problems which I've had and the uh, difficulties which I've encountered along the way, because you will probably have problems. Um, this is not like moving house, this is like moving country. You're going from old style um, Intel chip to a system on a chip, which is massively, completely, utterly different. And uh, there's lots of things which can go wrong al along the way. And almost definitely, most of my friends with reasonably sophisticated setups have bumped into significant issues as they've gone from um, the old style to the new. But put, we'll come on to that uh, towards the end. Look, what are the advantages of this uh, astonishing system? Um, it's incredibly fast. I mean, I mean I've got uh, a top of the range. This is uh, the M1 Ultra. Uh, it's got 128 gigs of RAM. It's got 20 cores. It's just, you know. Um, and when you first fire it up, uh, the, the basic internal moving around stuff is just what? So I go, um, Apple Studio, could you move that from there to, done it. Oh, Apple Studio, could you work out Pi to a million, done it. You know, it's kind of, oh, okay. Um, and those uh, kind of performance things have really been translated into practical things, uh, particularly for people using video. Um, when um, our video editor, um, Hugh, everybody say hi to you, hi you. When he went from a 12 core um, Mac Pro onto an entry level basic M1 Mac Mini, the difference was chalk and cheese. And so everybody I know who does video has just gone, no problem, I'm going straight onto an M1, no difficulties whatsoever. Audio people have had slightly more of an issue. And the performance issues you see, the performance gains you'll see, even using screaming machine like this. Um, is not going to be the kind of day and night differences that some people have seen on um, other um, applications of this technology um, for a whole range of reasons. But the performance increases are tangible and significant. Uh, this is, I've got 225 instruments in here. Uh, I've got a mixture of contact um, um, running BBC uh, Spitfire stuff and uh, BBC Symphony Orchestra, uh, so quite a lot of tracks. I've also got uh, a whole load of um, Dune synths in here. Now, if you look carefully down in this bottom left-hand corner, this is the performance meter. Look, it's just ticking over. It's idling. It's hardly moving. It's hardly moving the meter at all. Uh, and however hard I've tried, I haven't really got it really to make any serious impact on this CPU. So that's why I spent 5,000 pounds of my hard-earned money 
buying this uh, supercomputer so that I can move on and not have performance issues anymore. And in that respect, it has absolutely delivered. Other things which are huge advantages, listen. No, I can't hear the fan noise either. I can't tell you what a big deal that is actually because I used to have this massive great PC going <gasps> it sounded like a sort of you know 747 warming up waiting for a flight it was just you know yeah I could have put it in a shed oh. anyway this it's just sitting under there going uh, which is very very nice indeed um, so that and the lack of heat and the lack of power and everything else is really really good okay so um in essence, it works, uh, it works really well, but there have been some issues along the way, which I will touch on later. Um, let's, first of all, just for those of you who haven't got into this yet, um, there's two ways of running software on an M1 Mac. One is a piece of software which is what's called silicon native. In other words, it's been recode, recoded by the developer to run on the silicon chip, and that's no small feat. You know, that's like taking, hmm, okay, we'll take this novel and translate it into Arabic. Oh, that's not that straightforward, is it? No, it's not. And some of them have done it better than others, and some of them have done it more efficiently than others. So there's a whole variety of um, ways in which this has been done. Some of them are blindingly fast, and some of them don't get anything like the same speed advantage, uh, you know, depending on how well it's been done. The other way, you, so, so you say, well, what about my software? My software has not been converted to this silicon thing. Can I still run it on an M1 Mac? The answer is probably, and that's using something called Rosetta. Rosetta is essentially, well, it takes its name from the Rosetta Stone, which is all to do with translating languages. And the, so um, the Rosetta is an interpreter which takes, hmm, here's an old style piece of software. Hmm, here's a new style chip. Put Rosetta 2 in the middle and the two will play with each other. But all this translation in the middle takes CPU cycles. So what you're going to end up with is something which runs, but at a cost. And the cost can be really significant. Um, it can, when I was experimenting with an M1 Max MacBook earlier in the year, I was getting a 30% performance hit running stuff on Rosetta compared to running it natively. And that means sometimes the difference between a performance gain over your old system and a performance loss. Eventually, everything will run silicon native. Now, okay, so you want to run uh, a Rosetta plugin. Let, this is the other thing you need to bear in mind. If your door, uh, logical whatever, is obviously silicon native, which obviously logic is because it's run by the made by the nice people from Apple, um, then you can only run, um, you can only run, if the door is running silicon native, then it'll only run plugins, which are also silicon native. So if you've got 500 plugins, you will only be able to run them if every single one of them is silicon native. What happens if one is not silicon native? Um, the As logic loads it up, it will bin them off. It'll say, no, no, sorry, you can't run that. And it won't come up in the available list. Um, so suppose you desperately want to run the Uji Mimuji 2000, which was this favorite synth of yours, which is still running under Rosetta. How do you do it? Um, pretty straightforward. You uh, go, you, you select logic. Okay, here is, uh, or whatever your door may be. Okay, you go Command I to bring up the information. And if you look at this, uh, in the information, you see this bit here. Ooh, let's bring it down a little bit so you can see it more clearly. If you check that box, open using Rosetta. Now, what's going to happen is next time we open Logic, it will open up um, using Rosetta. Not look. Do you see this? It says uh, version 10.7.4 Rosetta. In other words, it's telling you it's running in Rosetta. Now, when you run it, you'll be able to access all those old plugins, but at a significant cost in terms of CPU. So, you pay your money, you take your choice. Okay, um, so if you're going to go on to an M1 Mac, you've really got to buy into this whole lifestyle. <laughs> you've just got to go silicon native or bust. Okay, um, now 
there's st despite the fact that this is not exactly fresh out the blocks this m1 stuff it's been around for quite a while now there's still tons and tons of stuff which has not been converted to um, uh, the silicon native um, native instruments ru contact runs uh, in silicon native it runs reasonably well but nothing else the, but okay shall we start delving into one or two of the problems we've had along the way and as i say i don't know a single person who's gone onto this who hasn't had some form of problem um okay when i first ran logic um it goes it scans all the plugins go, does all that thing and it comes to one it doesn't like and goes boom i am very sorry i am not interested in this it comes up with this message uh here we go it says incompatible audio units found okay and you either click continue or start plugin manager whichever one you clicked nothing happened it crashed over and over again and however long you leave it there uh you know i left it overnight still didn't make any difference so this is apple's own software for evaluating the uh, suitability of plugins and when it finds an unsuitable one it crashes honestly really seriously okay work around work around i know what i'll do i'll take all the plugins out of the plugin folder and stick them somewhere else so there are no plugins then it'll start okay let me show you where the plugin folders are because this may come in handy to you there's two okay if you go okay if you go here again let's get into the zoomy in a bit uh on the root of your hard drive you'll see library go into library you'll see audio go into audio you'll see plugins go into plugins and you'll see components components is where all your plugins live okay now there's more than one library folder here's the other here's the other good thing look you also have a user library folder how do you get to it if you go to go and then you push option watch that menu the library folder pops up yeah now this is a different library folder okay and so here are all the audio things in here and there's all the plugins and there's any components normally it'll keep all the plugins in one place and not another okay so i get rid of all the plugins and i load the thing up and it still doesn't work look you don't believe me look so here is a screenshot i've trashed i've got rid of the audio uh, unit cache so it doesn't think it it doesn't know what it was doing before i've deleted all the plugins from both folders but look at that it still thinks there are 39 plugins left and one of them it doesn't like and it kept crashing this is logic this is apple's own program and it still didn't do it properly okay <clears throat> getting slightly frustrated now um i find a solution uh, the solution is uh from a company called macpaw who make a program called uh clean my mac x and what it does is it goes through the system getting rid of all the needless junk that is clogging up your system and a lot of the files which are causing these kind of problems are cache files in other words this is a file it's run this process before it's remembered it's run this before but then it won't forget that it's run it before and so you're trying to get it to go past that point and it goes it's like a toddler you know when you're trying to get a two-year-old to, to, to get on its bike and ride home and it sits down the road and says no and you go oh please this is what it felt like okay and it does seem stupid that i've spent five thousand pounds on a apple studio you know possibly the last supercomputer i'll ever have to buy and yet to get apple's own program running i have to spend 30 pounds on a piece of software made by these excellent people macpaw to sort it out i think there's a problem there right anyway moving on um uh, another problem i had was uh disk utility okay so um every now and again a drive gets slightly corrupted and you or you you need to go into um disk utility and repair stuff okay so you go shift command u up comes the utilities folder you open disk utility and then it will allow it, it inspects all the drives and then it allows you to do first aid and all that malarkey so i put a drive in and it goes it's an hfs drive formatted for the last version of um um 
Apple because I was using also with other drives which wouldn't recognize the new one. It says, oh no, can't repair this drive. It's too badly damaged. Copy everything off, quick. Really, really? Okay. I go and plug it into an old Intel Mac, run disk utilities. Oh, right, no problem. I'll sort that out for you. Fixed it. Okay. So this is M1 Mac won't fix an Apple drive, but an Intel Mac will. I then have an even more serious problem. I have an eight terabyte drive, which is no small investment. And I go, I need to reformat it. Won't do it. What? No, sorry, not interested. Okay, so this is uh, running on the Apple Studio. I then go back to uh, Monterey, this operating system running on an Intel Mac, and it still won't do it. Eventually, I go back to an Intel Mac running an earlier version of the operating system, and Disk Utilities erases the drive and everything's fine. So there are problems with USB, there are problems with Disk Utility, there are problems with um, the evaluation tool. Um, I have had um, a couple of other issues as well while we're on the subject. Um, one of them, um, you know, small things, Cubase runs great. Contact, broadly speaking, runs pretty well. I have had some issues uh, with it forgetting um, its um, some of the instruments and you have to relocate them when it loads. And it's not the end of the world, um, but it's the kind of thing which you could live without really. But then, you know, this is, the problem is, uh, and this is, I think, uniquely a problem which, well, not maybe uniquely, but it's, it is a problem which we audio people have. You see, we're not just using that one central piece of software like Premiere, whatever. We're using all these pieces of software produced by all these different people all over the world. So there's dozens of developers have to get this right for the whole thing to work. And it doesn't always work. So you must expect if you go on to an M1, there to be some fairly significant bumps along the road, okay? Um, you really don't want to have to use Rosetta because you might end up with worse performance than the machine you came off. However, you there's no point in saying, oh, well, I'll wait. I mean, well, if you can wait, wait. But if, you're gonna, if you need to buy a new Mac, there's only one game in town and that's the M1 chip. So, or M2 chip or M3 or whatever else it is by the time you watch this. Um, so we're going to have to bite this bullet if you want to use a Mac. Okay, here we go. Here's that problem I was talking about. But, oh, where's it gone? Uh, there you go. Contact comes up and says, one or more of the contact instances recalled correctly, uh, cannot be cor recalled correct cor uh, correctly. So then it opens up and the first time you open contact, it says, please find these files. And you go, yeah, sure. And then it finds them and it loads them. But it's just another little thing which uh, you can probably live without. Um, but this is all part of the pain of going onto a new system. Here you go, look. Up it comes, then that, then you go browse a folder, and you then go onto the, uh, find the folder where you know that particular lot live, and you go, go on then, knock yourself out, find the files, and it goes whoosh, and it goes through and finds them pretty quickly, and then you're good to go. But, look, I hope you found this helpful. Um, I'm pleased I've gone on to an M1 Mac, frankly, because the performance increase I'm getting are huge. And the lack of noise and heat and everything else is great. There is only one way forward, and that is making it work with the M1. So I'm, gonna, I'm sticking in there and waiting for it, the various things to get better. Um, along the way, however, it's going to be a while before all these problems are ironed out. And some of the ones which originate with Apple's own software, I find surprising. <laughs> really surprising. Uh, so look, I mean, the advantage from your perspective is that I will be able to use, uh, you know, Mac only software and some of these like Logic. So we can do some stuff in Logic, not just in uh, Cubase and things. So I'm going to be broadened out a little bit, I think. So look, I hope you found that useful. Um, Please, just one last plea, in the, uh, in the comments, don't turn into a Mac versus PC, um, you know, civil war. It's just, they're only tools, we're just trying to write music, okay? If you want to use a PC, that's fantastic. If you want to use a Mac, that's also fantastic. 
I don't want any sort of lobbing grenades over the Great Divide. If you can possibly manage not to do that, I'd be grateful. Thank you very much indeed. Right, that's all for today. Uh, uh, I'll be back in the very near future uh, with something probably more creative and less technical. See you again.